So I'm going to talk about um, stamps and collectibles at Royal Mail, which is the part of the business that is there fundamentally to um, celebrate the nation's events, events and passions. That's our kind of mission statement. Um, we're going to just run through the background to the campaign, um, what we do at Royal, Royal Mail Stamps and Collectibles. Then Gary's going to talk about some of the advertising that we've done um, and the media strategy from, uh, from Tony. A little bit about, about the PR, which was really one of the highlights of the, of the campaign, is the activation that took place for the, for the campaign. A little bit about, about results. We won't tell you any figures, but we'll give you an idea of how, how successful it was. And then a little bit about inspiring a generation towards the end of the... Am well, I not loud enough? Really? Um, inspiring a generation at the end of the, of the session as well. Um, on your chairs, I've put some stamps out. I see you're all looking at them. So you've all got a set of, of what we call a mini sheet. Um, it's a set of six stamps, which is what we um, were selling as part of this campaign. We also were selling um, first day covers, which are here. Pass those around. Enjoy those as well. Um, for those of you who were stamp collectors, you'll recognize what these things are. Now, if you haven't been lucky enough to get the stamp that you want, then talk to the people next to you, a bit like Panini, and get the, one that you, uh, get the one that you want. And I just one final point before I kick in as well. Further to, further to Suki's point, I actually do know who's going to win the Sportsman Show of the Year because we know how many stamps we've sold. So I actually do know the answer to that. It's on my BlackBerry and um, I can be bribed. Um, okay, so let's launch in. What, we, what we're here to do um, at Stamps Collectibles is to celebrate the nation's passions and events, um, which is articulated in, these, in this image here. So we're doing a lot of stamp issues for a lot of different subjects um, around things that children are interested in, general art and literature. Um, obviously, we've had a massive campaign this year for the, uh, for the Diamond, Jubilee, Diamond Jubilee year, the 60th, uh, 60th year, but also more modern kind of subjects here, like uh, this uh, on the bottom right-hand side is, the, is our Great British Fashion um, issue, which came out in June time. And that celebrates fantastic British designers from Hardy Amis through Zandra Rhodes and, and Paul Smith more latterly. And these are some of their classic images and classic clothes that they designed over the years. So that's the kind of thing that we're, that we're involved in, celebrating the nation's passions and events. Um, a little bit about the background to the campaign. Um, for every Team GB athlete and Paralympic GB athlete that won a gold medal at the Olympic and Paralympic Games, London 2012, we issued a gold medal stamp, much as you can see there, in the format um, that, I've, that I've handed out, a six stamp mini sheet and a first day cover. And we sold those as individual items in post offices across the country um, and as uh, sets of all 29 gold medals. Um, what's crucial about this, of course, is that we, that we delivered this stamp into the post office the, the next day. So that process involved um, anything up to sort of, I think, um, Jess, um, Jay Jones, a Taekwondo player, they are players. Uh, one at 10:45 uh, at night, and we still had a stamp in, the, in 500 post offices, 518 post offices, the following morning between 9 and 12 o'clock. Um, we also painted a. <laughs> we also we also painted a gold post box in the hometown or training town or birthplace of every of every, every athlete. Again, the following day, we also produced um, digital advertising, press advertising, and cross track uh, promotions underground, uh, out-of-house advertising, again the following day. So every single gold medal athlete for the, for the Olympic Games was featured in a press ad that went into the press the following day. Um, so really, a, a, you know, a, a logistical masterpiece, if I may say so myself. But I think it's... Uh, <laughs> listen, when have you ever seen Royal Mail standing up this confident, this mojo that you're talking about? Absolutely. We ha it's, you know, I've got shivers on my spine now just thinking about what our team went through. For the, for the whole pre-Olympic Games. You know, I'm sitting, talking to Gary at 3 o'clock in the morning saying, where the fuck is my digital ad? Because <laughs> um, it's... Good. Polite, I wasn't that polite, no. Um, so it was an apps, you know, it was adrenaline rush the whole through. And I, what a way to experience the Olympics, because that, that medal win just means that little bit more when you're involved in it and, and, and can enjoy the experience with the athletes as well. Not directly, but you know what I mean. Um, yeah, so what have I, I'm rambling again. I do this when I, when I get this, this excited about the Olympics. Um, yeah, that's basically the thing. So what, what I think it, it, it brings to life is really the, the way that Royal Mail were able to kind of leverage the power of our, of our network. You know, we're getting uh, stamps into 500 post offices within, within 11 hours. Um, and then another 4,700 within three days. 
Um, we're painting gold post boxes. You know, our, we're famous for our red post boxes. We paint them gold. We had massive coverage, and I'll cover some some of the PR stuff at the end. Um, but also, um, but also the work that people put in, the partnerships that we had with other agencies was was second to none. It was a real absolute pleasure working on it. So I'm going to hand over to Gary now, um, who's going to go into a little bit detail about the advertising and the campaigns and the kind of big ideas that we came up with that they came up with. Um, thanks, Fraser. Um, have I got a? Luckily, I've only got one slide, is it? It's okay. But um, as a true ad man, I'm going to milk it to death. Um, there was a moment in the campaign quite early where I was tempted to say to Fraser, do you want to come and sleep with me for the next two weeks? Because it would be easier to roll over at three in the morning and say, where's my freaking digital ad, uh, than it would be to pick up the phone. But uh, um, I, I, I'm supposed to talk about the advertising. I, I'm probably not going to in, in, for two reasons. One, because in a way, we thought there's no point putting an intervening idea between what is a great product and the need to tell the consumer about it. So we just thought we'd stick the stamps on an ad, and that's what we did, um, and we consistently did. And you'll see up there um, uh, the, the product. The only slight, small, robust debate Fraser and I had really was about how the stamp should be displayed and whether we should do full page or half page, you know, the usual pr pretty boring agency client debates. But um, fortunately, Fraser saw sense, and we did lots of full page ads. But um, <laughs> Uh, which, in all fairness, was the right thing to do because actually we had to showcase the work and the stamps themselves. And actually, outside our agency now, we've got a poster site and we've got that ad in our window on a poster site. And it's incredible the number of people that walk by and just stop and watch cause, and, and look at it because they want to be reminded that, you know, we won as many gold medals as we did. Um, can I just say, while I'm here, for those of you who didn't get the stamp you want, uh, don't talk to the person on your left. Please go to www.rawmail.com, buy the other 28. They are available. There are lots left. They make a great Christmas present. Uh, so, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah well, indeed, the Paralympics in quite, yeah. So you can now buy the Paralympics as well. So, um, but really two, two things. One was, and, and Fraser talked about the logistical effort. It was a logistical a triumph, I suppose, for the Royal Mail. You know, we helped a bit in that, but only in a tiny way. Two observations, one of which I think Fraser will come back to. For an organization like the Royal Mail, it's, the, it's, it's something like this that I think in the way that Abby talked about can really give an organization its mojo back. And in a way, what the Royal Mail is, as you know, is ultimately a distribution network that gets things to people as quickly as possible. And that's what they've done with this campaign in an extraordinary way. So. One of the conversations that Fraser and I now are having a lot is what can we do to maximize the potential and demonstration of what we've done with this campaign? Because I think it's a hugely impressive demonstration of what the Royal Mail can do. Um, and you know, I think, in fairness to Fraser, the, the logistics around giving us the information that we needed in the time that we needed it. Because actually, if a medalist wins at 10.45 and we've got to get an ad out the next day, and we need to know what image, where is that image, what are they called. The information flow was absolutely fantastic, you know, in, in fairness to, to Fraser and his team. And, and, you know, that helped us enormously. Um, and then the final anecdote I would just tell, really, which if you're an ad man and you're doing a joint presentation with your client, you have to be absurdly sycophantic because that's the nature of the beast. Uh, and, you know, I should be true to form, uh, and I will be absurdly sycophantic, because there was a moment in the debate that we were having where I got it very badly wrong and Fraser got it very uh, right, because one of the big debates was, agency, this is an amazing thing, let's tell people about it before the Olympics, because we can get momentum, we can get people to register, it will save us a lot of money in advertising before we go, you'll know how many you're selling, blah, blah, blah. Fraser rightly said, I don't think that there is going to be a lot of excitement around the Olympics before the Olympics starts, so let's save our money, because actually once the Olympics starts, we'll be able to capture the excitement of the Games, and we'll probably make our money work harder. And it was almost as if Fraser had got access to the information that Marie and her team had presented uh, 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 this evening. But, so a small anecdote which demonstrates two things, really. Clients, in the end, most of the time are right. Uh, and secondly, if you, um, you know, put your money uh, you know, at the right time in the right place, you can really make it work very hard. But, so we didn't do a great deal other than put the ads together incredibly quickly overnight and really persuade Fraser to showcase the product. But it's an amazing thing for my team to be involved in and you know, a pleasure to work with the Royal Mail. Um, I'm going to hand over to Tony now because really what Tony's going to talk about is what we attempted to do in the ads, which is make a hero of the product, which is the stamps themselves, which as you see, see from the ones in front of you look great. So thanks. Thank you. 
So I'm going, to, um, I'm going to try very quickly and be both ever so slightly more sycophantic, um, but also then chop Fraser down to size um, and just talk a little bit about how we did things that ever so slightly bit better um, with the media than even he managed to do with the stamp. So bear with me on that. So the, the first thing, is, um, as we've heard, and we've heard it um, earlier on with regards to British Airways, um, touched on the, the mojo point earlier too, is that our challenge um, as an organization working with Fraser um, were multiple really. Um, we needed to sell the stamps um, and we're working here with a company called Royal Mail that as Fraser said he would traditionally stand up here and talk about direct mail and how direct mail helps you sell things. So we wanted to see whether or not there was a way of overcoming that. At the same time we had this sort of quite extraordinary story to tell, um, but tell in also a very simple way, which you sort of see in front of you here. It's almost like the, the stamp itself was, was the story. So what, what could we do? What could we do in the face of advertisers that were going to dwarf our spend um, to make sure that we cut through, help Fraser hit or exceed his sales targets, uh, and generally, if you like, inject a little bit of mojo maybe back into the, the Royal Mail brand? Well, the thing that we needed to be, as, as we've heard earlier on, um, we needed to think differently, we needed to be innovative, we needed to be dynamic. Um, and so what we did is we took the lead from Sir Fraser himself um, and his mighty Royal Mail Knights and um, we uh, adopted what we called a newsroom mentality. So newsroom insights from that are kind of threefold really. The first is that newsrooms tend to be always on, people are always there, ready to go. The second is that now news is obviously not just through one channel, it's through multiple channels, multiple platforms, etc. So we need to take that on board. And the third thing is that newsrooms both announce and also distribute content. Um, so all of this against the backdrop of a, an advertiser and a company that, that's quite comfortable with something like direct mail, but thankfully under Fraser's tutelage here was able to kind of broaden its wings. So how do we actually do all of that? Well, the first thing in terms of being always on and ready to go, um, we had the kind of tough gig of having to be made to watch the Olympics for the whole time. As soon as the gold medal is win, then everything kind of kicked into action. I'll talk to you a bit more about that in a second. The second thing is that we needed to make sure that we were um, present, if you like, across multiple channels. So with a small budget, we made that decision to go very broad, actually, in our, our channel selection. So we were advertising in newspapers through uh, online display and other digital display channels, social media on the cross tracks that, that Fraser mentioned and also on radio with, with Talk Sport. And finally about this kind of announcement and, and distribution of, of content. Um, and this is really where we kind of the, the sort of the in-house people kind of um, kicked into action. So um, we, for press, um, we kind of, we had a situation where uh, the guys at Beta um, we're on call, ready to get the images. The images arrived in Beta's offices. Beta turned around and made a variety of ads, and then we're on call to our guys in the office or at home, or wherever they had to actually be, to get the work done the next day. But not always just the next day. It was sometimes it was actually about kicking that out as soon as possible. So for press, for example, Nick Frit Nick Hills, our, our press director, on a Saturday night was receiving calls from Fraser, who was then making calls to the newspapers, who had held back their printing to be able to allow the ads to run. The ads would then appear slightly ahead of the stamps in the, uh, in the post offices, but, but first thing the next morning. Um, in digital, we had Marika, um, one of our online buyers, who um, effectively kind of worked all hours that were necessary. She became a real kind of surrogate part of Fraser's team. As soon as the work came over from Beta, so she was there to actually adapt the work, get that out live, and that was within, in, in effect, minutes of receiving that from Beta. There, were, there was activity going out to announce the gold medal wins. Um, the cross track, so the kind of thing that was then working with the media owners themselves to make sure that they had their own production people ready to go. Um, and finally, on the talk sport, this is where kind of more of the custom content came in. So we developed a, an editorial program with them called Summer of Success, which um, we were certainly hoping it would be when we um, signed that deal. Um, and it was. So they had then themselves a whole variety of commentators that would be ready as soon as the gold medal was won. The call would go to Talk Sport. Talk Sport would gather the commentators together. They would produce this minute or a minute and a half of content that would then air immediately in the next news program. And that happened throughout the entirety of the Olympics. So successful was it that they actually 
adopted that as a feature to run consistently thereafter. So with all of this, all this kind of stuff going on, and I've, I've touched briefly on the fact that it was, it was great to be involved in it. It was a brilliant campaign to be involved in, and obviously the three of us were, Fraser probably more so than someone like me, to be honest, who was, was obviously at the heart of it. But it really was one of those things that a collaboration could, could not have been, would not have allowed it to happen without that. And not just in terms of you know, the three of us here from the different agencies, but as I say, the media owners themselves um, were working tremendously hard on our behalf, both in terms of not just the sales teams, not just the people that have come up with the ideas, but also actually right through into their production teams as well. Um, so it was an oriented effort, one that it was great to be involved in, and I'll now hand over to Fraser to talk you through just how successful that was. Thanks, Tony. I'm going to read my notes this time and not get so carried away. Um, I think it's fair to just go through very quickly what the process was to get these stamps produced. So an athlete would win at, uh, at one of the Olympic venues, uh, and we would download one of the images that was taken by Getty. Um, so we pay Getty license. They would download it to us within 20 minutes. Within the next hour, we'd have this, um, the design. So we'd choose a photo, we'd crop it, uh, we'd Photoshop it so that it looked as good as it could be in the format, obviously, which is only that big. Um, We'd then uh, upload that to LOCOG for approval because they had to approve every, every single stamp. Um, when they'd approved it, um, we would get the image out to our group comms guys, our PA, PR guys, who would produce a stamp. You probably see more of those than you have the, the little stamps, and I'll come to that in a moment. Um, we would then distribute the artwork um, to six regional printers from um, London to Edinburgh. Um, and they would then, uh, using Royal Mail's same-day service, deliver those stamps out to... Um, <laughs> I'm just telling you the facts. <laughs> um, uh, would distribute those stamps to, um, to 518. In fact, it was more than that, because we didn't know where the, w which athletes were going to win, therefore which post office we would have to deliver them to. So every day we were saying, right, who won, where do they live, where have we got to deliver another batch of, uh, of gold medal stamps to their local post office because we were painting the, uh, the post box there as well. So that was the process. Um, a little bit about, I think, the, uh, the PR. Um, this is probably the bit that, that kind of captures the imagination of, of as, much as, as much as anything else did. On the first gold medal win, I don't remember the names, my apologies. Somebody's got the stamp and they can read it out if they wish. Um, Gary Lindick presented the stamp to them, they signed it, they took a photo shoot and we, and we were able to PR the, uh, the photo shoot of these people winning the stamp. Same for Bradley Wiggins. Um, the, the gold post boxes were absolutely taken to heart by the, by the consumers. Um, I took a little ride on my bike over to my local post box in Alston in, in, in Warwickshire when Nick Skelton's got his post box and there's literally crowds of people. It may have been a coincidence today I was there but it was a Sunday. I say crowds, 10, 15 people. <laughs> It's not, it's not the Olympic Stadium, I'll give you that, but, you know, nonetheless, there are people who are there standing, taking photographs of their family next to this gold, next to this gold post box. And this is what, and that's the excitement that, that I think this, this, this brought. So, a great job by the, uh, by the PR guys, a great job, you know, it's classic lace, isn't it? Very sycophantic, it's a little embarrassing, so turn it down next time. Tony, you're actually worse. Um, so... Yeah, a little bit about, uh, I think, results we're going to talk about now. Now, we're not, we've got less, we've got shorter pockets than you have, I guarantee you that, at Royal Mail. And, in fact, regardless of how much money we've got, we can't be seen to be spending any, because we're heavily criticised by somebody else called the Mail. We, there's a few caveats here, obviously, because we, 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 won, we won 29 gold medals. We won a further 34 at the, at the Paralympics. Um, but I'm just going to concentrate for the moment on the, um, on the Olympics at the moment because it's early days for the Paralympics. We only launched the stamps for the Paralympics on, on Monday. So very, 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 um, only launched the sets of stamps on Monday. However, we were 42% over target. Um, that's this morning. Um, if I was telling you tomorrow, we'd have beaten our target. That's, we, we're still selling a lot of stamps every single day. Um, however, we won 45 more medals than we expected to win. So... Does that mean we've pretty much hit target? Probably, but of course the stamps are on sale until Christmas and we're still doing an awful lot every single day. Um, the original advertised price of the stamp set, based on 19 wins, the same amount that we won in Beijing, we were offering the 20th free, was £68.40. The final price of the set was £104.40. And I think probably demand for that type of price is going to affect 
the amount, we, amount of sets we're going to sell. So, you know, I think it's safe to say there's an absolute success, and so there's still a long way to go. We also, um, we believe that we probably achieved about 10 million pounds of, of PR value uh, from the gold post boxes and the stamps and the kind of uh, activity that you can see here. Um, we've also acquired getting on for 10,000 new customers. And for a brand like Royal Mail Stamps and Collectibles uh, that in February will be issuing a stamp um, celebrating locomotives of Northern Ireland is... is <laughs> <laughs> However, the following month, Doctor Who. Yeah, fantastic. <laughs> Um, you know, it's a really, really good thing. So we've basically increased the size of our customer data by, by, by 5% in, in a matter of two weeks. I'm going to let you read that quote yourself, that quote yourself, which is from our, one of our marketing director. But I'm actually going to read one for you from David Cameron. And he, he did this in, a, in an interview with the BBC. Royal Mail have had an excellent Olympic Games. They've produced these stamps, they're painting the post boxes. I don't know who is doing the thinking for them, but I think they've been really on the ball. Very good idea. Um, now, okay, I'm big enough myself up a little bit with that, or, or, the, or the brand. However, when you use that piece of information and put it into the business, it really creates a, some significant excitement within the people who a, were involved in the uh, in, the, in, the, in the program itself. The support staff at the agencies were certainly, you know, fantastic. Um, and they really were part of this team 24 hours a day. But also the frontline staff. You know, you talked about your pilots and your, and, and your, and your cabin staff, etc. Our frontline staff have struggled for a long time with, with the, some of the things they have to put up with. And to, and, to, and, to, and to communicate this internally has really, as you say, put mojo is the word of the night, isn't it? So let's use it again and again has really put that mojo back into, it certainly in, into our business. Final point, um, and Gary, Gary said this, it's about how do we leverage this, how do we take advantage? Um, not so much commercially, because we've got as much work to do with reputation as we have with, with purely, purely financial things. Um, so we've taken this mantra of Inspire a Generation, and we're working with a company who um, provide um, lesson planning content and, and lesson content for, for schools through all, all, uh, all age groups, but also educators, so people who are educating at home, people who are educating at nursery level. And we're going to work with them on a project called um, Your Dreams on a Stamp. Um, and the insights come from a picture that Tom Daly drew when he was nine, when um, LOCOG announced that they would be pitching for the London 2012 Games. And it was a picture of him standing upside down on a 10 meter board with London 2012 written on, on this picture. And he drew it. Um, oh, I, just, I just love telling this story. Um, and he showed his parents, so they probably put it on the fridge and all that kind of stuff. And that was published recently. And we've taken that insight. And what we're going to do is try and, um, try and create a project that will go into schools where draw, and it's not necessarily sporty, it can be arts, literature, whatever it might be, draw an image of where you want to be in 10 years' time, your dreams on a stamp, and then use our Smiler product, look it up on the internet, which is a very similar to the, to the stamps that you've seen here. You've got, you've got three there, Mike. Murray, that's a cat must the pigeons for the, for the, um, for the sports personality, isn't it? So, um, Smiley's is basically uh, a format that you go online. We were talking about some, I was talking to somebody about Touchnote earlier on, or Moon, or Moon Pig. Basically, you can put your image on a stamp uh, and have that delivered back to, to you. So, it's, it li literally is your dream on a stamp. So, that's what we're working on at the moment, which I think is, is the right way to kind of pull, push this through into, uh, into this idea of, of, of inspiring a generation. I've got lots more to say, but I think I'll just stop now. So thank you very much for the opportunity. Um, yeah.